Hello everybody, it's Kara from Wild Book Garden and today I'm here with the Encanto book tag. I was not tagged by anybody, I just finally watched Encanto and I loved it and I just want some way to show that love and what better way than to talk about the songs and talk about books at the same time. It's a win-win. This tag was originally created by Anusha at Passport to Eden. I will link that original video down below. Please check it out and I'm really excited about these questions um, so let's just get into it. Usual caveats that just because I don't have a book to hold up doesn't mean I don't own the book. Um, my organization system means that sometimes I just don't have access to them or I'm like I don't want to just like pull a bunch of books out to get to them. So that's why you'll see a mix. Um, the first question is name a book that explores multiple family generations and that of course is based on the song The Family Madrigal and I had kind of a hard time with this one because I'm not the biggest fan of like multi-generation stories like family sagas um, but I finally picked one that is not that but I think it still fits and that is Broken Strings by Eric Walters and Kathy Kaser. This is a book that follows a young Jewish girl who starts learning more about her grandfather's past and her family's past um, and their history with the Holocaust and this book definitely obviously deals with a lot of really heavy topics. It doesn't happen on page but it is told kind of through stories or flashbacks and it is a big part of the book so just keep that in mind. Um, and this book is also set very soon after 9-11 and I think the way that the authors tied those things to some of the other issues and like topics in the book was just masterful um, and the reason I picked it for this question is because the main character, um, her relationship with her grandfather is a really important one and getting to see them interact throughout the book was really wonderful. Um, I especially love the way that her grandfather ended up getting involved um, with the play that they were doing because um, the main character is auditioning to be in Fiddler on the Roof and at first she's really disappointed that she got the mother character instead of one of the daughters that she wanted to play but then it seems like maybe it's not so bad because the boy that she has a crush on is playing her on stage husband um, and then when she is at her grandfather's house looking for props she comes across a musical instrument and she she doesn't understand because her grandfather hates music, he doesn't even like it played around him, so she doesn't understand why he would have this and she asks him about it and he initially gets very upset but he ends up talking to her more about where this instrument came from and what it means and how that ties into again their family history and World War II and the Holocaust and this is just a really really well done book. I highly recommend it if you can handle the subject material and I do think it did a really good job of showing the different generations of characters. Number two is Waiting on a Miracle which is I think my third favorite song. Um, I really really loved it. I guess I should say that kind of as we go I'm gonna talk a little bit about my thoughts on the movie but like as a general overview I really loved it. Um, I think Mirabelle is one of my all-time favorite Disney protagonists. Like I adore her. Um, I love the themes and messages of the movie. I thought the animation was beautiful. I really like that it focused like the way it focused on family and the messiness of that um, with the love that can happen there as well. Um, I really liked all the different characters and how even the ones that Maybe you didn't get like a starring role, like there's a couple of side characters who I really loved who I would have liked to see get like maybe their own song, um, but they were still like a part of the story and like a part of the family and I really liked that. Um, I do think the ending could have been, like I like the resolution, but there was one relationship that I think needed a lot more work than we saw but I did still like enjoy what happened there um, and just like the character development of like various characters in the movie I think were really really well done except for again that last part um, and I did love the music I know it's not everybody's thing but there are a handful of songs in particular that even if I wasn't super impressed with like the score overall I think those songs alone would have made it worth it like just the way like not just them being good songs and like you know catchy or enjoyable to listen to but like the characterization that happens in them I think is fantastic so anyway this is like my third favorite song. I love it. And the question for that one is, what is a book you enjoyed that took longer than expected to finish? And this is kind of a recent answer. I actually talked about this in the wrap up um, where I mentioned this book or reviewed it. And that is Witch Shadow by Susan Dennard. This is the fourth full length novel, but fifth book overall in the Witchland series. Um, and I was actually buddy reading this with Hannah from Lynn Hermione. We've been buddy reading books in the series and really enjoying that. But um, I fell very behind on the buddy read. So I appreciate Hannah, you being so understanding of that. Um, but just like, it was something where I had a lot of things going on at the same time and even though I was still reading I feel like I didn't have the headspace to devote to this kind of book like not that the other books I was reading weren't as interesting or weren't as complex because that's not what I'm saying but the way that this book really starts building on things and tying a lot of things together in terms of like these different characters and things that happened like centuries ago and like finally figuring out what's going on um like I think that needed a specific kind of focus that I couldn't give it at the time which is why it took me longer to read even though I really enjoyed this book overall and it's actually my second favorite in the series. Number three is Surface Pressure name a character who has to do it all and Surface Pressure is my favorite song in the whole movie. I love it so much it hits me in my chest like <laughs> in my emotions and I just have to say like I mentioned this on Twitter but I have to agree with the other people I was seeing who were saying that 
the official family tree puts Louisa as like the middle child, but I kind of, it's not that I don't believe it, but it's like, it doesn't ring true to me. Like surface pressure and Louisa's character has like the strongest big sister, like eldest daughter energy I have ever seen. Um, speaking as an eldest daughter myself, like that just, just yeah that's this song really hits me um obviously our circumstances are not exactly the same for one thing i don't have super strength um but just like the way she talks about like I don't, like trying to carry things for people and how she feels like if she can't do that like what is she here for and um yeah just like some of these lines just get me like really really emotional and the song itself is incredibly catchy and i really love it but just the way it explores louise's character i really love and anyway so the question was about what was it about? Oh, a character who has to do it all. Um, and I actually picked a lot of recent reads for this tag, I'm realizing. Um, but I went with Verity from the Farseer trilogy by Robin Hobb. Um, this is Royal Assassin, which is the most recent book I finished in this trilogy. And I am having an interesting experience. I am really liking some things about this series and not liking others. But one thing that I do love is Verity's character. I am stressed for him because the impression I've gotten from people who love Robin Hobb's books is that like nothing good ever happens. Um, so I'm trying not to get too attached, but it's too late. I already really love him. Um, but he's just like, he does so much and he sacrifices so much and it's really frustrating because the nature of what he's doing means that people don't know that he's, um, that he's working so hard and that he's putting his own health and life in danger in order to protect, um, the people he cares about and like his kingdom of people that he cares about and yeah, it's just like, he really, he really has to do so, so much um, in the books that I have read so far, and I just really love him. He's definitely one of my favorite characters. And he definitely fits this question, I think, because again, he just like, he, he really does have to do it all, and it's frustrating to see people feel like he's um, not taking things seriously or he's not doing enough to help, when really it's just that the things he's doing to help are not visible. Um, yeah, he just has a really hard job and like, poor boy needs a nap. I say poor boy, it's like he is a grown man who's <laughs> much older than me, but I'm like, poor boy needs a nap. Number four is We Don't Talk About Bruno, um, and that one is to talk about a book you haven't talked about. Um, you don't talk, We Don't Talk About Bruno is my th uh, second favorite song. I really love that one as well. Um, there's like some verses in particular that are just like so, so good. And yeah, again, the way that this song fits into the story as a whole, like into the movie, I love it. And I pretty much had to go with a book that I haven't talked about in a wrap-up yet at the time of filming this because I read it very recently, like in this month, um, because if I have read a book, I always end up talking about it, at least in my wrap-up and possibly in other videos. So this was kind of the only way that I could answer this question. Um, and that is Playing the Cards You're Dealt by Varian Johnson. This is a contemporary book that I absolutely loved. Um, it follows a young kid named Ant who he and his best friend are planning to enter a card playing competition. Um, it's like this legacy, like his father did it and his grandfather did it and like Ant's older brother did it. And it's just like very important to their family, specifically to the men in their family. And so Ant is planning to enter with his best friend, but then his best friend can't enter anymore. And so Ant ends up teaming up with this new girl in his class who he really likes, but he's like, is it okay if I'm like playing with a girl? Like um, the way this book deals with things like toxic masculinity um, and also other topics like alcoholism and just like really messy or toxic like family relationships or friendships like it's just it's so well done it makes me so happy to think that young kids are going to grow up having these books um i just think the way it handled these issues was really really impressive and um also just filled with like the book is also filled with really lovable characters and i think as a story it's really great and really engaging as well number five is what else can i do which this is my fourth favorite song oh, well maybe it's maybe it's tied with um Maybe it's tied with my number three, Waiting on a Miracle, because I really do love this one as well, and I love the character development for Isabella. Like, I think this song is such a good example of somebody doing kind of like retroactive character development almost, like where you find out something and it puts everything else in a new light in a way that doesn't feel forced um, or like cheap or easy. I just really love this song. I love this whole scene. I love the characters involved and how their like sister relationship changes. I just really, really love this one. Um, and I love what Isabella's character arc or like character exploration, like I love what that is and what that does. Um, and so the question for this one is to name a book that you thought would be light and fluffy, but hit emotionally, um, which you guys know, I, I love these books, <laughs> these kinds of books. Um, so I actually picked two. This one is one where I knew it would be that it would deal with some serious ideas, but I didn't know how far it would go. And that is Sugar and Spite by Gail de Villanueva. This is only like 200 pages too. It's a super short book. And this book does deal with, um, like I, I knew it would deal with bullying and I knew that it would talk about um, our main character 
she ends up doing a she ends up using a like friendship type potion um in order to try and make this girl who's bullying her stop and to like become friends with her um but it ends up going very wrong and so i knew the book would talk about that which is something that i appreciate with those kinds of stories i like when um i like when books deal with the like really unfortunate implications of things like love spells or friendship spells or anything like that um, and then I also knew obviously that this book is going to deal with bullying um, so I knew it would have some of those like heavy topics but I was still surprised at how far this book went and the way it shows that like like sometimes you hurt people and you can't fix it um, or sometimes you lose people like just yeah like the some things about the author's note especially like really really got to me and like the reason that the author wrote the story the way she did like um there's definitely a lot of like happier things in this book as well but i was just very um surprised and impressed by how far it went with certain things like even though i didn't enjoy everything that happens in this book um i think the way it was done was like very impressive and very thoughtful and then the other one i wanted to pick for this question is i love you so mochi by sarah kun this is a contemporary um contemporary romance i guess following a girl named kimmy and she really loves fashion design um like she loves creating and designing clothing like that's her passion but she doesn't really think of it as something that is valuable like something that she can like do for a living or something that she can take pride in as an accomplishment she just she thinks of it as like a silly hobby basically um and when her mother finds out that she has dropped out of this like art class because um her and her mother have always bonded over their love for art um i think kimmy was originally going to be a painter maybe um and i think her mother might have been one as well and they had this really big blow-up fight and so kimmy ends up going to stay with her estranged grandparents um for spring break because she just wants to get away from everything um and so she ends up going to Kyoto, Japan to meet, to meet them for the first time. And I just really, really love this. Um, this definitely, this book does have a really sweet romance, which I really enjoyed. But there's a lot of other things it does as well. Like the way it talks about family relationships and like estrangement and like reconciliation and forgiveness and like all of that I just think was really good. Um, I loved getting to know the setting like Kyoto, Japan and ha seeing Kimi fall in love with this place um, and seeing her connect to her grandparents for the first time because I don't think she'd ever met them before. Um, just like yeah and the, the way that this book talks about like like design and like clothing and things that are traditionally like devalued or like you know because they're associated with women um and seen as shallow or unimportant the way this book really celebrates them as an art form and as serious work was it just really like filled my heart like it made me really happy so it looks like a fluffy kind of romance on the surface and there is a sweet romance but there's a lot of other things too so really enjoyed that one number six is those oroguitas characters who make you believe in soulmates so i went and i looked at the last book that i added to my otp shelf on goodreads um, and that was Little Thieves by Margaret Owen. Um, I have talked a lot about this book recently because it was one of my favorites of the year. Um, I really, really loved it. And I, where do I even start? Like, I love everything about this book. Um, so this is a Goose Girl retelling um, that is inspired by German folklore. It's kind of dark and atmospheric. And we are following Vanya, um, who is the um, maid from this story, basically, which I'm finding is something I really like in retellings. I find that very interesting. Um, and so she has taken the place of the princess and she is using this position in order to um, steal a bunch of jewels from rich people because she's trying to get enough money to escape the influence of her godmothers who are death and fortune. Um, so there's pretty high stakes there. And then in the middle of this, um, this <laughs> like eager kind of junior detective shows up who starts investigating why all these wealthy people have um, their jewels going missing. Um, so there's that. And then another thing that happens is um, as Vanya is still trying to get enough money to like escape and also trying to avoid this like person investigating um she hears that the princess who she's impersonating her fiance who is a horrible person um is coming back early and she thought she'd be able to get out of here before she actually had to go through with the marriage so there's like a lot going on um i this is a book that's really about like trauma and healing um and seeing Vanya find people who care about her is just so satisfying and so wonderful um i think vanya is a character type i keep saying this and i'm sorry for repeating myself but a lot of authors think they can do that character type and i feel like not a lot of them can or at least they don't do it the way that i like um because vanya is one of those like you know super tough only out for herself like that kind of thing but i think what makes her really work for me is that we see even from the beginning that there are still some lines that she doesn't want to cross which i appreciate and we also see why she has grown up thinking that she can only count on herself um like it's very believable and so seeing her realize that there are people who care about her is just wonderful um and also because i mentioned it for this question obviously there is a romance in this book that i really really love like the way these two characters play off each other is just so wonderful and 
just fun to read. Um, like they're both so clever and like the way that they like admire each other and respect each other as like opponents is great. I love it. Um, yeah, also the world building and the writing is fantastic. The illustrations are gorgeous, um, which Margaret Owen does herself. Let me see. Like I just, I love this book. Number seven is All of You and that is to name a book that features rebuilding relationships and I picked As Brave As You by Jason Reynolds. Um, this is one of his books that I think doesn't get as much attention and it's not one of my like top favorites of his but I still thought it was fantastic. Like I've never given a book from him less than four stars um, and this follows uh, two brothers who end up going to stay with their grandparents for the summer. Um, they live in the south, I don't remember where, and so they're, this like follows them kind of like a slice of life story, um, but it's also a story that's really about things like what bravery means. Um, I think this book is also one that deals a little bit with toxic masculinity. Um, it deals with like like trauma, like generational trauma, and um, we see throughout the book all the characters start to, well like the young boys start learning more about their family history. Um, and we also see like there, there is kind of a focus on relationships and ones that are broken and maybe can they be rebuilt. Um, and one thing that I was really impressed with is that this book did a great job of like making you buy into like both perspectives um, because like when you find out why um, the main character's father like is estranged from his father, um, like so the boy's grandfather, when you find out why it makes sense like it's not it's one of those things where it's like it's not this character's fault but how could you not blame them for that you know for this thing that happened um so I, you totally get that but then when you see what this estrangement is doing to the grandfather like you also understand like his perspective like i just think that it did this really well like this is another book that deals with very messy families um like family relationships and i just think it was really well done their grandfather is also blind and i feel like that was um like explored and incorporated in the story in really interesting ways um i, th I believe this book won the schneider award for disability representation so um it seems like it was done well but yeah really really enjoy this book and recommend it and finally number eight is colombia mi encanto and that is to name a book that left you immersed in the culture and i'm going to pick another one that i read very recently and that is Where the Rhythm Takes You by Sarah Doss. Um, this is a contemporary retelling of Persuasion that is currently the only Persuasion retelling I acknowledge because <laughs> um, I love Persuasion and I love this book. I think it adapted the story so well but if you don't know Persuasion or you don't really care about it, um, it also just reads really well by itself as a standalone like contemporary romance. The main character is a girl named Rena who is really focused on her family's hotel. Um, after her mother passed away she became even more determined to like take care of the hotel and to like pour her like her whole like heart and life into this um and it seems like everybody else is moving on from the hotel and moving on from losing her mother except her like she doesn't understand how people can move on and the captain wentworth character is a boy named aiden who obviously he and reyna were involved when they were younger and we find out near the end of the book like we know that something happened to break them up and we don't fall find out until later what that was which by the way i often hate flashbacks these were done i think really really well and they were short and they did what they needed to do and this book is set in tobago and so aiden has now come back to tobago because um um, his some friends of his are like throwing him like a birthday kind of celebration like a multi-week birthday vacation type thing um, and they think it'd be fun if they go back to his hometown and he is now a member of this super popular musical group so he comes back and uh, guess where they're staying <laughs> they're staying at Raina's hotel so the two of them end up having to interact and like face each other again after everything that happened um, and yeah I just think the relationship was done really well I think the character development was great I love the writing and I obviously really loved the way the setting was done um, because that's why I'm talking about it in this question. I think this is the first book I read that is set in Tobago and I feel like the book did such a good job of communicating like the feel and like what things looked like and felt like and because they're also showing around some characters who are not from Tobago while also like the the main characters Aiden and Reina are very familiar with it I feel like there was a really good balance of um kind of showing the more like tourist spots you know like these things that um Tobago is more well known for and then also just like the everyday things about living there um I just feel like that came through so well like the setting was really really rich and I really loved this book I also think that at the end it did like the author handled some things that I think are really difficult to do in a way that I find satisfying in a way that I really loved like I think she handled them brilliantly so yes definitely my favorite persuasion retelling and so far the only one I would recommend um but I loved this okay everybody so that was the Encanto book tag um I'm gonna tag a few people if you would like to do it I just picked a few people who I either know have seen and loved the movie or I think they have um but anybody who wants to do this please do it I'm going to tag Kira from Kira the Scrivener, Taylor from Page Screen Taylor and Julia from Shakespeare and Such Taylor, I know that you have a lot going on and maybe you're on a little bit of a channel hiatus, so like absolutely no pressure to do this, um, but if you've been wanting to make a video and you didn't know what to do, this is a nice, fun, quick tag that I would love to see your answers for. 
But again, no pressure. Thank you guys so much for watching. I will see you soon with another video, and I hope you love the next book you read. Bye!